Welcome back, y'all. We are uh, continuing our journey to figure out where E shows up from the standpoint of compounded interest. Remember in the last few videos, we saw what simple interests were, and then we also looked at some different examples of compounding interest where we changed our compounding periods. In this situation, we're gonna actually generate a, kind of a, a thought experiment that allows us to see how the number E is related to compounding periods. So specifically, we're gonna like build on that last video where we were talking about compounded interest with a thought example to show where this definition comes up. Remember, E is a mathematical constant. The first few digits of the decimal looks like 2.718281828459045235536536 blah blah blah. This goes on forever and it never repeats. And the calculus based definition is limit one calculus based definition is limit as m goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over m to the m. This kind of looks like that uh, compounding principle, right? You've got the 1 plus some interest rate raised to a power. In this situation, the interest rate is 100%, and then we're going to compound m times during the year, right? So we divide the interest rate by m and then take it to the mth power, and then we let m go off to infinity. Let's explore exactly what we mean by this by taking a look at the following thought experiment, which is um, let's assume that our, comp our interest uh, calculations related to the last one um, arise in the following scenario. So we start with $1 in the bank. So the original principal on our loan is $1. There it is, right? And then we have this 1 plus an interest rate raised to the number of times that we compound. In this situation, we're going to say that the number of times we compound will divide the interest rate by that number. And then we'll actually take that number of compounding periods. So let's take a look at what this means. If I start with a dollar in the bank and I want to know how much I have at the end of the year under the assumption that I'm paid 100% interest. I don't know what bank is offering 100% interest, but whatever it is, I want to be there. That sounds delightful. Um, so if I think about this, at the end of one year, if I put a dollar in the bank at 100% interest and I compound only once, in other words, the bank will only write interest to my account one time that year. Then the question is, how much do I have at the end of the year? Well, this is one plus one divided by one raised to the first power. Well, that's one plus one equals two. So at the end of one year, I have $2 in the bank. Um, I'm just gonna find my phone real quick so that I can do some calculations with you. There it is. Um, so let's go ahead and get this up and running. Um, so when we look at this one, uh, one plus one half squared. Um, so in this situation, what we're saying is that we're going to have two compounding periods. So let's say that I put my money in the bank at January 1st. Halfway through the year, let's say at the end of June, June 30th, the bank is going to compound my interest, 100% interest, divided by two because I'm going to do two compounding periods. So at the end of June 1st, I'll have a uh, dollar fifty. And then at the end of December 31st, uh, they're going to compound again. So a dollar fifty plus, you know, uh, what is that going to be? A seventy-five cents. Uh, we can actually look at this. Let me uh, drop out of this thing, and then just do a quick calculation. In this situation, I'm going to actually go to Octave Online. This is an online calculator. Um, there we go. That we can use. So if I have one plus one half raised to the second power, uh, that looks like it's going to be 2.25. So this thing is going to be 2.25. In other words, if I compound twice, I'm going to have this amount of money, right? So the next question is, what if I compounded four times a year? What if I compounded at the end of March, the end of June, the end of September, and the end of December? So if we go back to our calculator, so if I just push up, so I literally push the up arrow, it will get me back to the last version. And in this situation, maybe I say it's one plus one fourth to the fourth. How much money would I have? Let's go ahead and format long. So this will give me a longer um, approach to that. So what is this? 2.4414 Looks like a lot of digits there. So literally I just wrote that down. And now all of a sudden I can start to change this 
to let's say that we combat it 12 times a year. Well, 12 times a year means once every month. So I do it at the end of January, the end of February, assuming that I started January 1st, the end of March, April, May, June, July, all the way to the end of the year. So let's go ahead and call M the number of compounding periods. And we're gonna say that it's 12. And then what I'm gonna do is take the 100% interest rate, divide by the number of compounding periods, and raise that to the nth power. And notice in this situation, um, we are exceeding the uh, level of precision in my work. So maybe I'll say let's do five decimal points. So what is this? 2.61303553. And this is going to be an approximation rather than an exact science. So uh, I'm going to say this is approximately equal to. Um, so the idea is that we're kind of asking ourselves the question, what happens as the amount, the number of compounding periods increases? As we saw in the last video, when I compound more frequently, I earn interest on my interest. So if I only compound once a year, I only earn interest on my original principal. But if I compound twice a year, the first time I compound, I'm earning interest on my principal. The second time I compound, I'm earning interest on the original principal plus the interest that I earned in the last period, which is why this is higher. And what we're seeing is the more frequently I compound, the more times I earn interest on my interest, so the higher the number goes. And in fact, what if we ask ourselves the question, instead of compounding once every month, let's compound once every day. So let's go back to this calculator and we'll push the up arrow. Up arrow gives me the last version and we'll say, hey, I wanna compound 365 times a year, so I'm gonna earn interest every single day. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at 2.714567, let's say five. It's approximately equal to, it's not exact, right? And again, we're increasing the number and notice that the number of times as it increases, this number increases. And we could ask ourselves the question, well, what happens if we keep doing this over and over and over again? So maybe instead of every day, what if we do it every minute, right? Or every second or every millisecond. Um, and that's kind of this thought here. Maybe we do it a thousand times a year. So once every, you know, three times a day, 10,000 times a year, 30 times a day, 100,000 times a year. Uh, you know, what did that be like? 300 times a day. Um, and we can kind of run through those scenarios. So if I just push up, and instead of 365 times, let's say I do it 1,000 times. So this is going to be 2.7169239. Uh, let's say that I do it 10,000 times. Uh, well, this is going to be 2.7184563. Uh, let's say that I do it 100,000 times right? Notice that this number is getting closer and closer and closer to that famous uh, exponent power that we were looking at. So what is this? Two, six, uh, eight, three, seven, two. Um, and let's say we do it a million times, which is just fantastic. I don't know how Octave does this calculation. Um, I have some ideas, but uh, so one, eight, two, eight, zero, four, six, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm guessing something in logs going on in the background there. So in this situation, um, the question that we might ask is, okay, well, what if instead of saying like 10,000 or 100,000 or a million, what if we were to say to ourselves, like, what if we were to do this just an infinite number of times? And that's exactly where the concept of E comes up. The idea of E is let us not limit ourselves to a specific number. Let's look at what happens when the number of times we compound goes off to infinity. So remember the habit here, we take one plus the interest rate. In this case, we're assuming the interest rate is 100%. So I'm, and then we compound M number of times total. So this is limit as M goes to infinity of one plus one over M to the M. And that's exactly what E is. And we're seeing that that number is approximately equal to this thing. Crazy thing is I can't actually expand this forever, forever, forever because this number is irrational. Like I, I'm not gonna write that all out, but the point is this is one way to get to that number. It's a, a, a compounding interest mechanism to talk about the number E. And it's fascinating to think that 
finance allows us to think about what continuously compounded means. So literally this means like every instant in time we're compounding interest on our interest. And yet this constant shows up all over the place in mathematics. It shows up as Euler's formula. It shows up as uh, a, a very powerful basis for Fourier transforms. Like th this is something that shows up uh, as ubiquitous through mathematics, right? So when I talk about famous math ideas, um, if I mention the Golden Gate Bridge or the Eiffel Tower, can you picture those monuments? Yeah, every mathematician on earth, just like those geographical locations are quite famous, so too is the number E very, very famous. It shows up in many contexts in mathematical work. Um, and this is one way to get there through compounding interest. So with that, what we're going to do is transition into studying what the graph of the natural exponent function looks like. So f of x equals e to the x. And we're going to compare it to the base 2 and base 3, because notice it's in between. right? And we'll talk about the behavior of that graph, where the asymptotes are, how it grows, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the next video, we'll actually, uh, in the video after that, we'll talk about um, how we can do transformations on this and kind of adapt it. Uh, so welcome. Congratulations on getting through a compound interest approach to the number E. Um, and I look forward to studying this in the next video as we explore what the graph looks like and properties of that graph to set a foundation for future explorations with that natural exponent base. All right. See you there.